Why, it's Merchiarm. I've got a lot of thoughts, so I'm gonna make them your problem. Some people actually hate the way my channel is named and that slogan. I would like to point out for those who are that sensitive and who are in that mindset, I'm really sorry to say this, but that's a joke. They aren't gonna be your problem, and if they are your problem, trust me, that's your problem then. That's an issue for you and you yourself. I don't make any of these videos to try to purposely be controversial, to try to purposely be an asshole. That is not my intent with any of my channels to do like a Trisha Paytas or Jake Paul or anything like that. That's not my intent. I'm not purposely trying to be toxic in a sense. It's just a discussion place, essentially. It's a place to discuss where I will put my stupid thoughts out there that won't let me sleep and then you discuss them with me. That's the whole point of it. Today's video is another reaction to the comments because the comments just keep coming. And while a lot of people aren't even checking out my first reaction video to begin with, they're only watching that video and not my other video, which is a reaction and does answer some of their questions. It does answer some of their points. People aren't watching that reaction video. So I'm going to react to some of the comments where in my reaction video, I didn't even answer any of them as well. I'm going to react to those today because I figured why not? Might as well, there's still some unanswered point of view, some answer, some unanswered questions. We might as well try. But there is this one by Lava Cakes. I see way too much of myself in Chloe. Their dad died in a car wreck when they were in middle school, leaving them with their abusive mom. And the spiral afterward matched hers perfectly. Getting into trouble, having a best friend that just up and disappears out of nowhere, eventually quitting school, and spending most of my teen years causing trouble or sulking in your room. Thinking she peaked in middle school also hit home way too hard. I'm slowly working on blaming everyone for my problems, and no, I'm not the only one that matters things, and I'm getting better with it. It's extremely difficult though, since I've been doing it most of my life. I like to think Chloe eventually grew out of it too. And the reply to this is, same here, it takes a lot of work to work on shit like that in my opinion, so nor it's normal for her to take some time to do so. I agree with your point, she probably worked over on it over a long time. And that is true, you would see in my reaction video that in the comics, seemingly the creators noticed that she was very toxic and she <laughs> really needed a change of pace and really needed a change of personality. Although, I think reading some of the comics, she does seem to have some of those negative personalities, but guess what? She's still working on them. She's still working and learning to grow and be a slightly different person than what she was before. That is nice to see from the comics. What people are saying, though, is that we would have loved to have seen some sort of, like, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of something showing from her personality that they wanted that character growth, the original devs, because the people who created the comics are not the devs of the, of the video game. Those are completely different companies, completely different people. The devs and the comic book creators are two completely different companies. So that's completely different staff members interpreting this character for the public. So the devs not putting in a single crumb of her changing until the very last bit of the game. And even then, again, a lot a lot of us are saying that feels forced because it doesn't feel like Chloe and I mentioned that in my original video it doesn't feel like Chloe that feels like it was just forced to try to get us to have sympathy for Chloe and to feel like yes she has changed when it just feels almost forced but I do understand that in a way it is her changing because she realized she fucked up she realized she messed up and she realized she's just, she is the cause of this storm because she is you know essentially making Max having to constantly save her and do other things that's a small change, but it feels, again, forced by a lot of people. A lot of people are saying it feels forced, and I agree. It just feels forced, that little bit of crumbs. So we actually just wanted just a little bit more. And honestly, if she went through just maybe a little bit of a change at the end of the act of the chapter, if she had a little bit of a change before that little freak out moment in her comics when she does change, I feel like it would have been a little bit more accepting and people would have been a little bit happier with that. But again, a lot of it does feel forced. Also, before... We move off away from this comment. So many people are saying it takes more than five days to grow. And I know, I get that. But she's also had, I think, six years to also grow with therapy, with Joyce being there for her, with Stephanie. I think just Steph is what people normally call her. I forget what that one African-American kid is in Before the Storm, but him... He was there. He's good friends with Chloe. So is Steph, very clearly. And then with David trying pretty decently to be there for her and to work with her and to talk with her and then rachel is there i know she's very um rachel 
And yes, it does take more than five days to move on from things, but she's also had five years and all of those people. She's had seven people, I think. I think I counted seven properly. She's had seven people plus to help her along with the therapist. She's had five years to try to change who she is. I'm not saying trying to heal from William. Before we get that all twisted, I'm not trying to say she's trying to heal from William. I'm trying to say she's trying to change who she is. Healing from a death is completely different than changing a toxic behavior that you openly display. Okay, so this is on my react video, but I was in the middle of editing and Atomic Flash responded because I couldn't find the comment on the original video for some reason. But they say, here it is, Chloe Price is a terrible person and Max Caulfield is the greatest and most patient friend a shitbag like Chloe Price could ask for. But just because Chloe's broken doesn't give her the right to lash out at everybody and then have Max help her with her insecurities, which I do talk about in my video a little bit about how it's just victim blaming to just be rude about Max having to leave and her not keeping up. And I also agree with this because I think I talk about it in my first video, my first react video, but I don't think I talk about it in my second one. So we'll talk about it here that yes, it is very rude to expect Max to be the savior and to do everything and i even think i talk about that in the first original video where i talk about chloe price about how chloe just talks about how max is the cure she's everything she can just fix everything and that's just not how things work chloe and that's also just not right to expect other people to try to do that for you in your life and especially with how chloe treats max that's just not a respectful thing to do people like chloe do not need a friend to help them heal they need a psychologist and a family th and family therapy yes 100 percent. sometimes depending on what is going on in your life it's just rude to actually expect your friends to constantly be there for you and to help you. That's a lot of stress on them. That's a lot of asking things for them. I understand you have a mental illness, but it's just really rude to expect someone else to do something so much for you to where they're just carrying all your burdens and doing the, all these things. And especially if you're giving nothing back to them, it's very disrespectful to ask friends to constantly be there and to constantly do things for you and to just fix you, to heal you. That's really rude rude i don't know why many people don't seem to understand that but i'm so glad that atomic flash does while our friends can help us heal and a good friend should a good friend should just not sit there and watch us suffer and do things like that it's still not their job they're not getting paid to do that they're not psychologists they're not therapists and it's just pretty rude to be asking a friend to do that much for you and max needs a better friend who isn't just an edgelord compensating for being depressed angry cynical jackass who thinks the world is out to hurt or betray her yes chloe price is a toxic character hiding behind a shoehorned gay romance and if everyone would stop simping for chloe's blue hair tattoos rebel vibe they would see that they are inadvertently supporting the idea that people who act like chloe are ideal partners in a relationship and that we should be more like her and considering how toxic the pc and woke culture of hollywood the internet and people are in general nowadays douchebags like chloe price surround us now and have and have other sims that are treated like shit by these people Stuff like the characters of Chloe Price and Rachel Ambar, why I think Life is Strange 2 is actually a superior product to the first two games. It's not full of toxic D-bags, best friends forevers, leaning into leaning into actually discussing bisexuality rather than cowardly implying it overall has a better story. No bad lip sync, doesn't have a boring player insert protagonist, and with Chloe gone from the picture, we actually get to see David is a ch cool, chill person when he's not fighting a teenage blue-haired brat or being ganged upon. I sympathize and feel bad for Chloe because she doesn't attempt to heal, because she's an irritating douche to everyone who doesn't excuse her behavior, and because she manipulates others to accomplish her selfish goals, and stroke her ego while also getting jealous of others being happy or friends with her friends. Chloe's just straight up a bad character, a bad friend, a bad daughter, and a bad excuse to let a town die, especially when letting Chloe die improves everybody's lives and brings people together and delivers justice. <laughs> You were right when you think when you said like your comment was a very good comment because yes. <laughs> Thank you, Atomic, and I'm so glad that I like stopped editing to find this comment because yes, yes, yes. I don't think I put this into my original video, and I think I may touch upon it in my first React video about how it's so unhealthy for us to be idealizing and in my opinion romanticizing relationships and people who are like chloe and essentially supporting the idea that people who are like chloe are ideal partners in a relationship and that we should be more like her that's not healthy that's not okay she does manipulate she does 
gaslight. She does guilt trip. She does all these things. If you are not able to realize yet at this point in your life that that is what those things are, that that is what she is doing, that is okay. I am not mad at you. I'm not mad at anyone who isn't able to recognize that right now in their life or hell, even if you don't ever want to recognize it, because that just means that you're just a victim of that person's abuse and manipulation. So I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed that you especially if you're a grown adult, that you are constantly refusing to see and understand that that is, what these, that is what these actions are, that is what her words are, regardless of whether or not you like it. And you clearly don't like it because some of the comments have zero fun with my video. But whether you like it or not, that is what that is. And it is so unhealthy for us to be supporting the idea and like the devs to be forcing and forcing the idea that their relationship is perfect, that the relationship is okay, that it's healthy when it's not. We should not be supporting this anymore. That's not something we should be doing. And I touch upon that in this video about how it's not okay for us to be twisting things to a different narrative all because some people don't want to admit that something's wrong because you're so blindly in love with it. You're so blindly obsessed with it. Sometimes you need to understand that it is okay to see a different point of view. It is okay to understand that it's not healthy. It is okay to understand that you can still love the character for certain parts of them, but still be open and understanding that, yeah, that's really toxic what they do, but I love this part about them. I love this about them. And that's okay. You can still love whatever you want about a certain character, but you still need to acknowledge that there are still bad parts about that character. This whole comment, I absolutely love it. I agree with it. I think both reaction videos part one and now part two will essentially summarize exactly what you've said here and we'll even add some points to some of your comments here. So again, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but thank you so much Atomic Flash for saying that. And I'm so glad you posted it here so I could find it and be able to have it in the video. Thank you. The next comment. Um, and I think it is here by Rip. I'm assuming cartoon. I still love Chloe. She just misunderstood her whole life. She's been through pain and toxicity. And when you're surrounded by toxicity, you can't grow or mature and you have no choice to become toxic. That's why I relate to Chloe. She's a perfect example of that. And when you become toxic, you don't want help because you feel like nothing will help you. And it isn't toxicity, it's depression. Let's, we're going to get to that comment in a quick second. <laughs> Not really a quick second. We'll get to it in a little bit. That's why I understand Chloe. Chloe's been through pain and hate. She just wants to escape the toxicity or depression. But like I said, when you become toxic, you feel as if the world, as if everyone in the world is against you or you can't trust people. So you become cold and dulled and numb from everything. Um, Let's break this down bit by bit. Let's go through this slowly. She's been through pain, yeah. She lost her father and then seemingly I think a year or two afterwards is when her mother gets with David, when Joyce gets with David. So seemingly her mother's moving on far too quickly, although I feel like a lot of people are forgotten and I can't remember if, her, I can't remember if I said this in the original video or not, so I'm going to mention it here again just in case. Joyce has been with William for longer than Chloe. I understand that, that is still a father figure. You cannot compare pain. Don't ever compare pain, but I'm just trying to mention that a lot of people seem to just rag on Joyce with just completely forgetting that this woman most likely met David, decided, oh, I want to date you. Sorry, met William and decided, oh, I want to date you. And then after a couple dates or after who knows how long, because I don't think they ever explain how old Joyce and William and all of them are at. So we don't even know how old Joyce and William were and how long it took for them to go from dating to marriage. But remember, they got to go through marriage. That's a whole process of deciding if this is the person for you. There's possibly family issues with grandma and grandpa going on or, you know, their parents going on. Like, do you really want to marry this person? Is he good for you? Or like, oh my God, yes, honey, he's amazing for you. Just marry him. Having to go through the whole, the whole process of setting up the wedding, which sometimes that in itself can just make people break up because that's so stressful and they find out oh well you don't want the things that I want and blah blah or it's just a stressful fight so you just break up you're like I can't deal with this there's that whole process and then somewhere and somewhere after that or maybe even between but I think it would probably be after that they decided to have a child and they raised that child from a baby to I think a 13 year old when William dies I mean so it's like you are raising this child together for 13 years that's a lot. And everyone is seeming to forget that just so they can love and worship and 
appreciate Chloe is what I'm trying to get around to, but you're just ignoring the fact that Joyce is in pain as well. You're putting Chloe's pain before Joyce's when she has been with this man for longer. She is also in pain. Yes, she may have seemingly moved on too quick because I think before the storm takes a year or two after William's death. I can't remember. So yes, she does seem to move on too quick, but you have to remember this woman is also in pain. So finding someone who seems to understand that pain and who just seems to understand her and is trying to and is trying and willing to work with Chloe it just it's her way of coping but i just wanted to talk about that because she has been through pain as well chloe has been through pain but i don't know the toxic part unless the toxic part is rachel <laughs> don't know what toxicity she's been through people are allowed to find ways to cope and if their way of coping is finding this person who they truly feel understands them and they feel like they're now able to fall in love again through that person because that person makes them feel so warm and safe, I don't feel like that's toxic. I do understand that the way David spoke to her, the way David said certain things to her, the way David ends up hitting her when she's older, I feel like that's still not okay. Joy should never have excused any of that. And now let's break down another part of this. It isn't toxicity. It's depression. I don't know if people know what depression is. And if they do, I feel like the way depression makes people feel and the way you mentally feel, the way some of your thoughts talk to you because they make you constantly feel negative towards yourself. I feel like that is being skewed into people believing that the way Chloe manipulates people, gaslighting people, doing all these things, I feel like people are skewing that into depression all because some people who are depressed can become cold and they feel numb and they feel separated from the outside world and they have all these other things because they have depression. I feel like people are skewing what depression is in order to fit towards these toxic and unhealthy behaviors because of maybe the things that people who have depression mentally hear on the inside and to their own selves. <laughs> I really needed to voice it. That that's not depression though. If your own thoughts are negative, they want you to hurt yourself. They think these certain things. They want people to focus on them. They want these certain things. That's okay. Those thoughts are there. They are meant to hurt you. That is what depression is about. They want to hurt you. They're meant to hurt you. They want you to hurt yourself. That's those negative thoughts that come with depression, but that doesn't define depression and it doesn't mean that is 100% what depression is. Now, I know that these people tend to often have depression themselves, which is why they compare it to depression, but I want you to know that that is not what depression is. Having a toxic behavior such as manipulating, gaslighting, doing all these things, that is not what depression is and that is not what depression makes you, that is not what that does to you. It makes you want to unalive yourself. The thoughts in your head are going to be so strong that you want to unalive yourself. That there are going to be so moments in your life that you feel so low, so drained of energy, so drained of emotion, that the only way to escape it all is to unalive yourself. That is what depression does. If you are feeling like being toxic or being or displaying unhealthy behaviors, if you feel that that is depression, then I'm sorry to have to tell you that literally even by textbook, textbook definition, that is not depression. Displaying these toxic behaviors are just that. They are toxic behaviors and anyone with any mental illness can display these. A physical disability or just completely neurodivergent or just completely void of anything like that. They're just normal, can have and display toxic behaviors. That doesn't mean they're depressed. I don't like it that people in the comments are trying to twist her toxic behaviors into depression because that really displays depression in a bad light. That if you have these toxic behaviors, you're just depressed and that's not okay. That's not something we need to be putting out there. Just like people on TikTok trying to show the fun times of depression and how cute and quirky it is. That's not depression. It's not cute. It's not quirky. It makes you want to unalive yourself and it makes you feel sometimes that no matter how many people in your life love you, none of that matters. You need to unalive yourself. That 
that's this this is skewing depression into a bad light and into a bad ideology especially for people who don't have the mental illness who then think that it's so cute and quirky to like pretend to have depression because we are skewing it in this bad light to where just about anything can be depression it's not okay to be doing that that's why a lot of people have stopped trying to do that and trying to call that out as negative and not okay to do the same thing here Twisting toxic behaviors into depression is not okay to be doing either. If you display toxic behaviors or you think you display toxic behaviors, that is just what that is. It is a toxic behavior. It is not as a result of your depression. Also, one thing a lot of people want to point out, everyone has flaws in this game. I never said they didn't. I never said no one else is flawed. I'm just going over Chloe Price. War here talks about, but there's one thing you're incorrect with. You said we try to fix broken people and we don't fix them. Max actually has fixed Chloe. If you listen to the last dialogue between them, you can see it clearly. Also, Chloe wasn't the only one who took benefits from the friendship. The way Max has changed throughout the game, became more brave, self-confident, and caring. It happened under Chloe's influence. Both Max and Chloe weren't perfect of a friend in the beginning of the game, but they both grew and changed together. I think you forget Max was the one who left Chloe and didn't talk to her for five years in the moment. Chloe needed more friends than, than ever. Wow, War... Way to do victim blaming. Way to blame a young child for leaving their friend against their will because Max clearly didn't want to leave Chloe, especially after such an accident. She didn't want to leave. She has said that a few times. She didn't want to leave. While Chloe felt that she really needed Max, Max had to adjust to a completely new lifestyle and to adjust to being in a completely new town and to adjust to growing up in this new town away from her best friend. It's just something that happens. That's not on Max. That is victim blaming to just blame Max for everything, for trying to grow up and to move past that and to understand that she can't be there for Chloe anymore, not physically at least. Chloe wasn't the one who also took, who took benefits from the friendship. Max changed throughout the game, becoming more brave, self-confident, and caring. I would say she became the opposite. Max doesn't become more brave. She's always been brave. She was able to stand up to people like Victoria, but still, like, she chose to do that. She stood up to Victoria. Max was always brave. She doesn't care. She's confident in who she is, and she's okay with that. And she's always caring. She goes out of her way. If you notice, she can go out of her way to help Alyssa at every moment. She constantly checks up on Kate. She takes care of Kate's bunny when she needs to. She does all these things. She helps, you know, she's nice with Warren. She does all these things. She's always been caring, brave, and self-confident. She becomes less, actually. Especially self-confident, most importantly. She, at first, starts out liking her own clothing style. She likes the way she dresses. She likes it, even though other people disagree. She thinks she's hipster or whatever, all these cliche things. But after a while, she tries to fit more towards Rachel and more towards that style because Chloe's so obsessed with Rachel and Max is obsessed with being, with feeling guilty towards not being there for Chloe and then also finding out that she might like Chloe romantically and so the fact that chloe worships rachel but not max max feels jealous and wants to almost be rachel to the point where i think max kind of likes it when she's wearing, wearing rachel's clothes and people mistake her for rachel this girl who's supposed to be so godlike beautiful and just too cool for everyone like she just feels jealous she wants to be rachel i actually feel like she becomes less self-confident by doing that and not remain who she is being that nerd and having her clothing style the way it is I'm gonna mention this, my personal thoughts. I don't mind Clo characters like Chloe existing. Absolutely, they're allowed to exist. Please let them exist, that's okay. But just as you say, as long as people acknowledge that these behaviors are to be observed and learned from, and that is so true, yes. So long as people acknowledge that these behaviors are not okay and that they're to be learned from, you know, you are just to observe them. You're not supposed to replicate that. You're not supposed to idolize that. You're not supposed to romanticize that. Um, and then they go on to say, I don't need every character to have a major arc or go through development and become the perfect character who's corrected every wrong they've ever committed. But I also feel like her lack of growth was why I didn't really have an interest in Chloe. And I don't really enjoy playing her in Before the Storm. It's the same reason why I don't like Rachel in the games. Since they never really gave me a reason to like her, except that Chloe liked her and that she seemed to have touched everyone's hearts at Blackwell. Except I never really saw them before the storm. I felt like it was the fault of the writing and more instead telling and more telling instead of showing. It might have helped that they were limited on how many episodes they could release. 
Yes, 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 yes. Let I think I might do a whole video on Rachel and why that's a whole shitty situation. But the name it really gives her a reason to like her besides the fact that Chloe likes her. Now, I might not do it just because I think Ulrich does a really, really good analysis on her and there's so very little things to go over on Rachel anyway. And I think Ulrich Salad Bar does an amazing video on her anyway, on Rachel. Please check that out. And again, no one is associated with this channel in any way, shape, or form. So please don't send them any hate. But And I also agree, once again, I don't need every character to have a major major art to go through some development to be the perfect character and to correct every wrong they've ever committed i don't need that either that's not what i'm saying but thank you for mentioning that sh her lack of growth is why you didn't really have an interest first off best name ever maybe i should just name myself this bitch door <laughs> Chloe can literally shoot a person and his dog and people think she's still great isn't that supposed to be like a massive red flag yeah yeah that's supposed to be a massive red flag and Aisha here was saying, what if people didn't get that option though? Um, if I remember right, if he doesn't take the gun away from you in the junkyard, and even then I think an all option, he can take the gun away from you. I think in the junkyard, you can just shoot him in the leg. And then when you go to his house in the beach, you have another option to just shoot him outright. If I remember right, you still get that option to shoot Frank's dog first Pompidou, and then you get to shoot Frank. You get to just outright kill them. That is an option no matter what, unless he takes the gun, because then in that scene, he has it and you guys don't have anything. What about people don't choose that option? Well, Aisha, it doesn't matter. Because as I mentioned, and someone else does mention, thank God someone else mentions, that this game is essentially like Witcher 3. And every voice line in Witcher 3, it doesn't matter which one you choose, that one is Geralt. It is who Geralt is. That is who he is as a person. He would have said those lines and that is why those lines are available. Just because you did not choose it does not mean that it's not who Chloe is. I don't care. I'm so sorry to have to tell you that. That just is who that person is. Sorry. I'm gonna call you Mora. In the games with dialogue choices, you have two ways to go about it. The Witcher 3 or the Skyrim way. The, wit the Skyrim is a no-brainer. You are the character, therefore you choose and pick what you want to do, how you interact, and go about the world. So you have the polar opposite choices. And with your three, you're playing as Geralt. You're not you. You're Geralt. A person living in this world with set core characteristic traits, meaning no matter what you pick or choose in the dialogue option, it will always align with his core character traits, making all the choices you pick Geralt. So she's actually not wrong here. It doesn't matter that you didn't pick it, it's still Chloe, regardless of your opinion on the matter. And thank you. Ugh. Like, that's a... I, I can end the video. That's it. <laughs> this is the only time I'm willing to be biased towards a comment because fucking thank you. No matter what you pick, that voice line is still Chloe. That is still who she is. Thank you, Mora. <laughs> like, that's it. I, we just end the video. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. <laughs> just because you aren't playing Chloe doesn't mean anything. You're playing Max. But every voice line that she can respond to that is chosen by Max, by the player, is still Chloe. No matter what you pick, it is her. Regardless of your opinion, regardless of the fact that you want to be so blindly in love with her that you don't want to admit it, it's still her it still exists it is still a situation just like with the dog and with frank chloe shooting them is still chloe it doesn't matter if you didn't pick that it's still her and her lack of caring is still her episode user i'm just gonna mention they're out of here it's only fair to mention them by the way she was sorry about the phone call thing she was, but as I mentioned in my reaction, I feel like she was only sorry because she had to sit in that hospital room just like she most likely had to do when William was dying. And as a result, she had to sit there again, be in that once again somber, weakened state where she's like, oh, someone nearly died. But this time, it is my fault because if Max hadn't answered that phone call, this would have been a thing. And she's probably sitting there, just many thoughts running through her head, most likely all of them being, oh, this could have been my fault or this was almost my fault because I didn't allow Max to try to be here for her friend. And I feel like that's the only reason why she said sorry was because she had to be in that state again when she was likely waiting for her father to see if he survived. He didn't survive. She had to be in the hospital and she had to sit there again just waiting and waiting and waiting. And most likely that is why she apologized because she realized how badly she messed up. Is that still okay and is that nice that she did? Yes, because honestly, I'm glad she finally admitted that she was wrong in something. But I hate that 
it has to come out of something really, really, really bad happening. And that is a huge thing about this game. And I think I mentioned it in my original React video that I really hate that Max even has to go through that whole nightmare situation, especially in order to just convince Chloe that she needs to stop going to the party. She does not need to go over there. She needs to open up to Chloe about these things. Having to admit that right out the back because your friend is too stupid, too ignorant, too annoying to just stop and listen to you that you have time powers. They don't. So please stop trying to do this because it's not going to go well no matter what. I have seen all the options. I am Doctor Strange, miss. I've seen all the universes. There's only one where things go well and it's with you doing things my way. Like, I just wish it wouldn't have to come to that extreme where something extreme needs to happen for Chloe to realize that she's wrong and she needs to apologize and that she needs to do certain things. Again, I'm not saying Chloe is the one who caused Kate to try to kill unalive herself. That's not what I'm saying. Do not twist it that way. I know some of you will anyway, but I'm just saying I wish I wouldn't have to go to that extreme for Chloe to realize that she's wrong and that she needs to not be like that. Brenda here says, I just finished the game for the first time. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> Welcome to the fandom. Welcome. Sophie Celestia says, I don't know what to think now. It's been a while since I watched the game and I really like Chloe. I completely understand your point of view. I don't want to believe she was that horrible. I think I'll rewatch it. After all, it's 15-ish when I first saw it. Sophie, if I'm not too late, I probably am. I think you should play the game instead of rewatching it because people don't often choose every voice line, even though they have time powers. So you can choose every voice line. And then if you don't like what you ended up, just rewind and choose the one that you liked. That's all you have to do. The only ones that matter are the really, really big choices. You might have to go back for them, but some of them you can actually rewind even through the big choice when the screen stops and it goes slow and you can only choose one or the other. Even some of those you can actually rewind, surprisingly enough. So I would personally go through and play the game if you could and choose every voice line option and really experience the game for yourself rather than just watching it through a playthrough, especially if you're not going to watch multiple playthroughs of multiple people choosing different options so you can fully experience the game. That seems to be all of them. Um, if you got through this video, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know it's a huge situation having to see all these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you never miss a video. Check out these two videos on the screen. Also, I don't have any graphics for the time being because I like to make them myself and I haven't gotten around to that just yet. But thank you all for being here. If you guys would like to continue supporting my channel, please subscribe. It means a lot to me to see this amazing growth. Um, and yeah, thank you for 11,000 views on that original video. That means the entire world to me. Thank you so much.